Hey everybody, this morning I'm on the north side of Indianapolis and I'm right here at the trailhead for the Monon Trail at 86th Street. And this particular area of Indianapolis is called Nora. And it's actually one of my favorite places in Indianapolis. I mean, there are a lot of places I like, but this one here just has some fond memories for me. And it is a really great place. So we're gonna talk about the Monon Trail in this video a little bit. And actually one of the bummers, one of the negatives I'd say about the Monon Trail. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, I'm Jason Compton with the Compton Home Group. Welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about something like the Monon Trail or of course Indianapolis, Indiana and what it's like to live in Indianapolis or any of the towns and the cities that surround Indy, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and also tap the little bell so you're notified every time we do a new video. Now we have people reaching out to us from all over the country with questions about Indianapolis of course, what it's like to live there, what might be the best fit for them, and then all the cities and towns that surround Indianapolis as well. So if you have questions about any place around Indianapolis or in Indianapolis, then make sure you reach out any way you know how. We'll always have you back with those questions, and we'll certainly have you back when it comes time for you to make your move to the Indy Metro. All right, again, guys, I am walking along the Monon Trail right here in Nora, which is on the north side of Indianapolis. And just behind me, got 86th Street, and this is actually a really happening place. There's the Big Lug Canteen right here. There's the Roost, which is an awesome little breakfast place. We've got Sam's Ale House right here as well. There's a huge Kroger, which is relatively new, just off to my right over here, that you can just see. And then across the street, and actually all up and down 86th Street, super commercial. They've got Starbucks across the street, a bunch of fast food restaurants. There's a Target across the street. There's a Whole Foods across the street. And then as you go further to the, the east, you get into Keystone, which is a really big shopping hub whenever you're looking for places like that in Indianapolis. So you've got the Keystone Fashion Mall. So a happening place, and this is a place that has a lot of good memories for me and the Monon Trail. This is where I first discovered the Monon Trail back in the 90s when I first moved here because I live just a little bit to the north of here kind of on the other side of where the Target is. And the Target has since gone through a huge renovation. And actually this whole area has gone through a major renovation and looks a little different than it did in the 90s whenever I was here. And talking kind of mid to late 90s. And the way that I discovered it is I lived in an apartment just a little bit north of here, like I said, and I'd ride my bike a lot, especially after work. I used to actually came to Indianapolis in the 90s as a high school science teacher at Westfield High School. And that was now kind of a long time ago when I left the school and started doing what I'm doing now about 10 years ago or so in real estate. But I would, after school, I'd ride my bike a lot. I can even remember the bike. It was this green mountain bike, a Diamondback. And I would ride to the north, I'd ride east, west, but I came to the south and I remember seeing the sign up there, which I don't know, has changed since the 90s for the Monon Trail, it's super faded out. And I thought, what is this trail? And so I jumped on this trail and it's super nice and paved, it's asphalt. And through this particular stretch especially, and I've discovered other stretches of it to be a lot like this. It was really private, it was shaded. It's almost like you're going through a canopy, a tunnel. And if you can look, got somebody just ran right by us here, but Looking to the south, it's like you're going through just a tunnel of trees. And as you go further to the north, it's like that as well. And then if you're a runner, you can run right here on the asphalt, but also you can see kind of on the sides, little paths, some crushed gravel. And a lot of people will run on that instead of on the asphalt just to reduce the pounding. These are all the positives of the Monon Trail. And the Monon Trail is very long. It wasn't as long in the 90s. It didn't extend as far south as it does now because you can go all the way downtown. You can get right off essentially at the Bottle Works District and Mass Ave, or just off Mass Ave on the north end of Mass Ave. And then if you go to the north, you can go through the rest of Indianapolis, which is basically up to 96th Street. North of that, you get through Carmel, and then you can go through Westfield and you can take it north of Westfield now. It's insane how long it is. It's about 27 miles. But, and those are again, all the positives of it. The big bummer about the Monon Trail is that it's subjective, of course, but it is essentially a dead straight line going from downtown Indianapolis through Indy, through Carmel, through Westfield. And so a lot of people moving to this particular area or to Indianapolis in general. A lot of, I would say the common things that I hear is that they wanna be near parks. They wanna be 
near walking trails or running trails or something like that. Now, that can mean a lot of different things to people. So your neighborhood might have a walking trail in it, but it's probably not gonna be very long. It might really be just a few hundred yards. It could be a mile, it could be something like that. If you want biking trails, something like that, again, it could be in your neighborhood or it could be somewhere nearby. The Monon Trail, if they hear about that and say, I wanna be near that Monon Trail because it does connect so much. I mean, you can go, like I said, all the way to downtown Indianapolis from here, and I've done that on my bike. I've not run that far. I used to run on the Monon too. And uh, my wife and I used to run on the Monon an awful lot. But the bummer about it is that we had to drive to it. So we've never lived close enough to the Monon Trail to where we could just ride our bike to the Monon Trail or walk to the Monon Trail or run over to it. We always had to drive to it. We had to drive to a trailhead or a facility. We used to actually run from Carmel in the Monon Center a lot. And we'd have to drive over there to the parking lot because we lived in Fishers. Now we don't anymore and we're really not close to the Monon. We're way east of it over in Greenfield and it would take probably 25 minutes, maybe 30 minutes for us to get to a reasonable trailhead of the Monon. And for us, that would probably be downtown somewhere. In fact, the Bottle Works would probably be the closest. We just go straight to the west, hit that parking lot, park, get out, get our bikes off, and then go. So that's a majority of what happens to people. Now, there are some other trails that do connect to the Monon, and there's some really nice ones. You've got Canal Trail, Broad Ripple, up north. There are several trails, actually, when you're going through Westfield, like the Midland Trace Trail and Noblesville, that actually do connect to the Monon, but it's not abundant. So if you want to be near the Monon Trail, you kind of have to live really close to it. And as I'm going further south here, you can see it's just wooded 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 and extremely private but actually on the other side of these trees now that i've gotten a little further south of 86th street which was hyper commercial i mean it's just shops and stores shops and stores and restaurants things like that as we're getting further south now we're getting into more residential areas and it is extremely residential from here basically all the way down to 62nd street broad ripple avenue in the village of broad ripple that's really only roughly three miles from here and so if you're running it's not a bad run, but you gotta run back is the thing. If you're biking, it is not that bad at all going down the Monon to Broderpool. And I used to do that on my bike from Nora down through this trail and into the village. So if you don't live right here in one of these neighborhoods just off the Monon Trail, then you're probably gonna have to commute to it. And if you wanna live right on the Monon Trail, that limits the number of opportunities that you have. And it also limits the number of opportunities that you have maybe in the place that you want to be. So if you're in Indianapolis, once you get further south and you get into Broad Ripple and you go south of Broad Ripple, you know, those homes might not be a fit for you. A lot of those homes along the Monon Trail are much smaller. So when you get into Broad Ripple, you can get into a lot of bungalows. So you can get into two bedroom homes and certainly three bedroom homes, but some of them are a thousand square feet, 1200 square feet, maybe a little bit bigger than that. And if you're looking for that four or five bedroom home with a uh, basement that you can finish or 3,000, 4,000 square feet, something like that, you're not gonna have a tremendous number of choices whenever you get right along the trail a little further south of here. And then if you want newer homes, you're not gonna find a lot of newer homes along the Monon Trail. The Monon Trail has a lot of very established neighborhoods, older homes that may not necessarily be a fit for you. Could be project homes. Now as you get further north, back up into Carmel, you can get some newer homes, but a lot of those homes were built in the 90s or the early 2000s, so they've been around a little while. So the Monon Trail is phenomenal. It is so fantastic, and you know, we're close to 30 miles of it now. But in order to utilize it, you gotta be near it, and if you're not, you're gonna have to just have in your mind that you gotta drive to it, or you got a longer bike ride to get to it, to access it, and everything that it has to offer. So while it has more positives than negatives, without a doubt, I would say that's probably the one bummer and, and a little bit of a misconception for people is that it's readily available for everybody, but it's not the case. You actually have to travel to it in most cases to utilize it. So if you have other questions about the Monon Trail, Indianapolis, or any of those cities and towns surrounding Indy, reach out any way that you know how, and we'll see you in the next one.